welcome back. And today's project, we are going to be using what's left, happens to be our yellow paper, and you should still have one more piece of practice paper. What we're going to be doing today is we are going to be creating a piece of wood, and then we are going to be laying our picture down on top of the wood. So in order to create the wood, we need to be drawing circles, Everybody get your, your little practice sheet out. That's it. We're also going to be drawing swirls, which are basically the same thing we're doing, but we're going to be making them loose. Maybe like a cinnamon bun. Wouldn't that be fun? Little swirls. So we're going to circle around. Just gets bigger and bigger. And around. We are going to be doing uh, vertical lines. Remember, our horizontal lines go across, but our, we're going to be doing vertical lines around our circles. So it's kind of like a game. If you want to draw down, but we don't want to hit our circle, we want to come around, go down, come around. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing on our yellow paper. And... But, oh, we can't... We, around we don't want to hit any of our circles and I'm doing it on this one on the white for practice so you can actually see because you may not be able to see so well when I do it on the yellow and so we're going to be doing stuff like that we will also be doing uh so we'll be doing a horizon line later and of course our horizon line is a straight line across or relatively straight line across but we're going to be creating our piece of wood first so let's get started with our yellow uh, paper we're going to be taking things like an orange crayon and maybe we have one that's maybe a bit darker this one's called scarlet and maybe let's just say maybe our, our brown this one, should, I think, should lay down on our paper fairly good. So we're going to start out just by randomly putting some circles on our paper. Maybe different sizes. And I just need my crayons out of the way. And we are going to put some swirls on them. Could be over top of them. Any direction will do. And what these are is if you've ever seen somebody cut into a piece of wood where there's knots in the wood. You may even see that on the floor if you have hardwood floor at home. Um, and so the, when the wood, wood grain comes down, it can't fit into the knots. So we're going to come down again with our one of our orange ones. And we're going to do what we just did on our practice. We're going to come down and go around the knots, not going through them, and sometimes they're very thin lines, and sometimes they're wide, but we're making, ooh, I think we're going to have to go around. Bumping and around again, and I don't know if this is starting to look like the floor at your house or not. And this side over here didn't have that many knots on it, but that's okay. We may want to do just a few extra lines in the brown so we can kind of go in between a couple of these and get some extra depth. Maybe add some to our swirls. 
little extra color. Now that we have our piece of wood, we are going to get started drawing a fox. I'm going to get out my black crayon if I can find my black crayon again. As you know, I've been using my black crayon a lot lately and uh, it's not as sharp as perhaps yours is. So probably a hand down and maybe you're towards your thumb, you're going to want to have a little point. And at that point, we are going to draw almost two straight lines, a shorter one across, and we're going to draw one that kind of comes down maybe with a bit of curve to it. And we are going to then have a curved line like that. Mine might be getting too big, but we'll find out. We're going to put some ears on top. They're kind of pointy. Foxes are known to have sort of pointy ears. And the next thing we're doing, we're going to give them a little eyeball. nose a little bit darker there. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to come from this line where we started and we're going to curve a line down like that. And when we stop here, we are going to now go back up to the top and draw sort of a neck and we're going to come across and we're going to curve down and meet our space. We need some little fox legs so our little fox doesn't fall down. And we are going to put two in the back. We're going to go straight down and we're going to round them up. And we're going to draw another one right, right almost right beside it. Down and a little, little curve line up. And Close to the front, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go down and curve line and up. And it's first the paw that's behind, we're going to kind of kick it out a bit and draw it sticking up like that. We are also going to give our fox a tail. We're going to have a nice big fluffy tail by drawing a curved line out and give it a little swish up and we're going to stop back here and draw back curve it in and there we have it, a nice fluffy tail and usually our fluffy tail has a white tip so we are going to draw sort of a maybe not a zigzag line that we that we practiced a couple of days ago but Lines that go back and forth, nothing necessarily even. Our fox's mouth and from his nose usually is going to come across and we're going to give him sort of a same idea with the bumpy lines. Doesn't have to be zigzaggy lines, sharp lines, but you can if you'd like. And He's going to have a little bit of patch on his belly too, so we're going to zig and zag him. Now, our little paws are going to have some zigzags on them too. And our fox, he's going to have little black paws. So while we still have our black crayon out, we'll just color those in. We're going to look through and I'm going to use the white on here. Uh, let's see if that's going to make a difference. Putting some white, not really a whole bunch. So you can put lay some white down if you want. And white would be on his tail as well. And his tummy. And 
in fact, I'm going to grab my, my uh, crayon again. And we're seeing the one side of his ear, but on this one, actually, we're seeing the inside of his ear, too. So we may even want to put a little bit of white there. Okay. Now we're going to grab sort of our orangey ones. I've got some red orange. I have some scarlet. And maybe orange would be good colors to color the rest of our fox in. So let's just see what we have. This one is with the just the plain old orange. And actually I'm I'm kind of liking that. You may want a darker one. Uh, those would be options. Or who knows, maybe you want a purple fox. That's it's it's your fox. And we are doing this in sort of the tradition of Horace Pippin, because he used to like to do his paintings on plaques of wood and that's what the would shine through it would give our uh, picture extra texture and if you want like i say if 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 you didn't like the the swirlies on your fox so much, you could always choose to use one of the darker oranges or even a red if you wanted. Um, but sort of the whole idea of us laying down our um, our swirls and our lines earlier were so we could enjoy that sort of transparency of what came through on the wood. And also, we're going to take our black crayon again, and we are going to give some more texture to our uh, white by just by giving some little dashes. So it kind of fills in sort of that fur effect. And you may want to do that if you use the lighter color. Uh, just the regular orange or the yellow orange and you might want to take the red orange and or the uh, darker one and maybe give some lines to your fox's coat as well. You may be happy with it like this or you can add some grasses to the foreground by just drawing a couple of straight lines and adding some little lines to kind of just suggest that he's walking in the grass. And if you want, we can do what we talked about earlier about drawing a horizon line. We might want to draw a horizon line behind him. And you would do that by going across and picking up your crayon and going across. We don't want to go over him. And you might think, well, there is a good place to put the farmer's house. Because I bet our fox maybe is looking to uh, find some supper. Could be some chickens on the menu. Who knows? And it's starting to get dark out because he's out there looking for his supper, so maybe we'll put some stars in the sky. And we are done. And here is our Mr. Fox, which reminds me of a really good book. Fantastic Mr. Fox, maybe you've read him.